So if you do any 3D printing, chances are you've printed a bunch of things like this, and maybe like this, and things like this, and certainly things like this. Let's see, I'll zoom in. Try to focus on that. Mm. Mm. Having a hard time. Okay. This is a calibration cube. Mm. Yeah, there we go. Um, and the deal is, what happens, you know, to get your 3D printer in uh, tuned in, you typically print a bunch of things like that, and then you measure it, and, you know, you waste a, not a huge amount of plastic, but you waste some plastic. Um, let's see if I'm zoomed. Focus on myself now. Um, and uh, eventually, you wind up with all these things, and, and you throw them away. And that's terrible. Uh, if you're lucky, maybe you recycle them. Um, so... Lately, I've been thinking a lot about recycling and the fact that, uh, you know, kind of uh, making lots of things that, you know, prototyping and so on and wasting a lot of plastic and uh, made me feel a little bit guilty. So uh, I also had this issue. I bought some Legos. You may know them. Can kind of into Legos these days. And I bought some, uh, not, not, uh, these are not normal Legos. These are actually some uh, imported um, from China. Uh, Lego kits, or not Lego kits, excuse me, Lego-like kits, Lepin kits. And one of the issues with the uh, big base plates, uh, this is like the hard, one of the hardest things to, to get right in, in the Lego world, uh, or in the print, in the, the uh, brick world, because they have to be really flat, or you want them really flat, because if they, you see a lot of these, they haven't cooled enough, and they kind of warp at the corners. Uh, and so this particular one I got, and it wasn't really great, and, and I was like, all right, you know, I, I hit it with some heat, and I was like, all right, um, you know, that flattened it out a little bit, and then I wound up messing up the corner, and all kinds of things happened. So this kind of ticked me off, and I started thinking, I said, well, I can do 3D printing, uh, so why don't I try printing some Lego base plates? Now, um, Legos are, are, are amazing things, because they are very, very precise. Um, that's why they work so well. That's why you uh, can, you know, lock them together. Um, and uh, if if they're... You know, if you have a nice precise fit, everything works out great. Now, um, you have to also be able to print nice and square. Uh, and what typically what you're doing when you're calibrating your printer is you're trying to make sure your bed is square, that you're extruding correctly, and all this kind of stuff. Now, here is something I printed, and I am very proud of. Um, this is a 32 by 32 uh, base plate. Um, it is about 10 inches by 10 inches, and to get this right, uh, the base is actually only 1.6, you know, you can get some, some good uh, details on, on Thingiverse in terms of, like, models for these sort of things, but the base itself is, like, 1.6 millimeters, and then the, uh, it's another, like, 1.6 millimeters for the, for the, uh, uh, the knob, and then they have to be, you know, precisely enough so that, you know, the, the minifigs and other Lego blocks and things will connect to them, um, but not, you know, but they'll fit on, but they won't just fall off. Uh, you know, this is kind of rough. This thing weighs 150 grams, and uh, if you do it just right, yeah. Yep. Now, um, here's one that's not quite so good, right? Well, okay. see, it comes apart easier. So, that's cool, and so now I know that across 10 inches, this thing is precise because I can put, you know, bigger Lego pieces on there too, and they have to line up, you know, so this is a pretty good test. Um, and the other cool thing about it is, even if it's not perfect, it's a useful Lego piece, right? So, um, all these calibration blocks, which are basically useless, instead, I wind up with reasonably good Lego pieces. What's not to love about that? And in some cases, even like custom Lego pieces. You know, I know there are purists out there who are like, well, no, I only use Lego blocks. Um, but, but hey, you know, if, if you're going to calibrate your printer, why not print something useful? Um, you know, because you can never have enough Legos. You can never have enough base plates. You never have enough bricks. You know, so you choose a, a piece that uh, kind of you like that can kind of stress out your printer. Uh, you know, maybe it's, a, it's just a Lego brick. So instead of doing, you know, some weird random shapes, um, you know, you print out a brick. Now, I like base plates because um, the nice thing about them is that they're flat on the bottom. 
uh, and uh, and you can you know and and this thing would cost me like eight bucks if I actually had to buy one of these, um, if I, a genuine Lego one. And uh, there are some issues with printing actual bricks, and I, I haven't gotten into printing bricks. I like the base plates because uh, they're that you don't have to deal with the hollowness inside. Um, I don't have any other uh, Lego bricks hand, hanging out. Here's a, for instance, in a, in a, this is this is not a base plate. It's a plate. Um, and it has to have all the knobs and things. They're pretty good. I can show you, you know, how well this sort of works together here. Um, it requires a little bit of force. Oh, cat's meowing. dinner time too um, but you can see how that uh, comes together nicely um, you could do base plates and things like that but then you have to probably have to deal with uh, some some kind of uh, um, support on the bottom especially for bricks so maybe typical Legos are, are not ideal for calibration stuff but I think the Lego base plate is really um, a, a really good thing to use for calibration because it, it you know definitely tests X Y and it, it's, it tests your extrusion amount because you know you want uh, you know basically across a huge area you know nice and consistent that you're extruding enough and if you're extruding too much you'll want it with you know pitting and blobs and things like that so it's it's uh, you know that your printer is in good shape if you can print out a really big Lego base plate that works really well and is nice and consistent. So that's my two cents. Uh, this is uh, Eraser Mice here on uh, my nerd planning technology and fun channel. So uh, as we get back into some 3D printing for the robotics and the other things, uh, this is just my two cents for today. Um, hopefully this will uh, help you guys out in your 3D printing and your Lego or robotics or whatever adventures you're having. Till next time.